we are now going to discuss titration curves. So first of all, I'd like you to get an idea of what the setup is. So there's a long glass tube called a burette, and it is able to measure uh, liquid very precisely to the extent that you can actually uh, uh, move this little lever on the burette in order to let one drop after another come out. So you can measure things very precisely. And below the burette is a flask or a beaker, and inside of it would be a liquid, um, and you are trying to determine the concentration of that liquid. And you're able to do that because you know the liquid in the burette, you know its concentration, and you know the volume that you are adding, and then you just have to know when you get a reaction in the, uh, in the flask. And once you know that, then you're able to use stoichiometry in order to determine the um, concentration of the analyte, which is the liquid in the flask. So um, in this uh, titration, very often, a strong base like sodium hydroxide is used, and then you can do a titration with a, a weak acid or a strong acid. We're going to start by looking at a strong base, strong acid, titration, and we'll see what happens there. Now, as you're doing the titration, what's going to help you know um, uh, what's going on is to be able to plot the volume of NaOH, and, and you're able to do that because um, you're following what's happening with the burette, and uh, versus the pH. So in order to know the pH um, at the key point of the reaction, uh, it's great if you have a pH meter, which is a instrument that you enter into the liquid and you're able to read uh, from the pH meter exactly what the pH is at each, each moment. So then you can uh, plot your titration curve. If not, at least you should have some sort of indicator as to what's going on, what the pH is. And so I'm just symbolizing here um, the fact that there are many different types of indicators. Uh, you, normally an indicator is a weak acid or base with its conjugate acid or base. And normally an indicator is a substance that will change colors, um, usually within a two pH range. So normally about a two pH range. And there are different types of indicators that will have different ranges, like uh, phenophthalene will usually have a high pH range, and there's um, uh, thymol blue and um, uh, methyl red and so on. And of course, there's litmus paper. I mean, uh, even your uh, neighbor who's applying to law school has heard of uh, litmus paper or litmus test. Uh, though they might not know the specifics. But a litmus uh, a paper usually has a uh, pH range that is uh, plus or minus in the 7 range, which is really good because very useful because, uh, of course, a pH 7 is a neutral pH. And then a litmus paper for acid uh, uh, pH will turn red, and then for a basic pH, it will turn blue. So then you have an idea when a reaction has taken place uh, using litmus paper. Okay, so you have some way to detect the pH in the flask. You know the volume uh, that you're adding. So now let's look at a reaction in which you have a strong acid, which you recognize, hydrochloric acid, and a strong base, of course, sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base. So if we, if we have a very low concentration of sodium hydroxide, which would be over here, near zero here, then you expect to have an extremely low pH. So you don't have to really memorize, uh, you know, the curve, it, you know, the general shape is helpful to know, which is sigmoidal, uh, Greek for S-shaped. I guess it's just easier to say S-shaped, but whatever. So it's a sigmoidal curve. It starts at a very low pH because that's when you have HCl, and high hydrogen concentration means very low pH because pH is negative log hydrogen ion concentration. So it starts very low, very low, and then suddenly you get this, this um, uh, it re goes up very quickly, and then um, you have a very high pH. So let's th consider what's going on here. So we have hydrogen chloride plus NaOH. So 
this is going to ionize into H plus and Cl minus. This is going to ionize into Na plus and OH minus. We know the OH minus will be attracted to the H plus because opposites attract, opposite charges attract, and so we get uh, water. And then what we have left over, because uh, sodium is not a very, um, Na plus in solution is not, um, it's very happy, it's very satisfied because it got rid of its electron, so it's very, it just sort of floats around. We call it a spectator ion, which we'll talk about more when we talk about, um, when we uh, look at organic chemistry. But nonetheless, Na plus and Cl minus, uh, they're not actual covalent bonding, but they sort of associate with each other because opposite charges attract Na plus and, and Cl minus. But water, that's a covalent bond, it's OH minus, uh, bonds with the hydrogen and uh, we produce water. In fact, some students like to remember that when you have an acid plus a base, it makes a salt and water. But really, uh, a better, uh, more general statement to make, even though there are exceptions to everything, is that an acid and a base make salt and a neutral compound. And so uh, when you have hydrogen and OH uh, minus, then it, uh, it does indeed make water. So, what is the pH of salt and water? Well, we have the pH of uh, water, and uh, water is a neutral compound, and um, it has very little H+, plus, very little OH-, minus, but they're balanced within water, so the pH um, at 25 degrees Celsius, at standard uh, uh, temperature and uh, pressure is going to be, uh, for a liquid, is going to be a pH of 7. And Na plus Cl minus in solution, I mean, uh, that's not going to affect pH in any way. Does it have any hydrogens to give off uh, in order to lower the pH? No. Um, is Cl minus a strong base, like OH minus is a powerful base? Is Cl minus a strong base? Will it rip protons off of things? No, not at all. In fact, there's a relationship here between HCl and Cl minus. And uh, you see it's, uh, it comes from the same compound. Cl minus comes from the HCl. And so we call this a conjugate acid base pair. And um, when you have a strong conjugate acid, you have a weak conjugate base. And when you have a strong conjugate base, you have a weak conjugate acid, because water would be considered a very weak acid. But NaOH is a strong base. So we can understand now that this neutralization occurs at a pH of 7. So we have that the equivalence of acid and base, meaning the acid portion and the base portion, the equivalence of acid and base, are equal at pH of 7. And for the titration curve, you can sort of see in math um, uh, you know, they, they say in a sigmoidal curve that it's sort of shaped in one direction here and then it's sort of shaped in another direction there. And so this is called the point of inflection where the curve changes direction. But in chemistry, this is called the equivalence point. So that's the equivalence point, and that's where the number of equivalents of acid and base are equal, and this is where we get a pH of 7. And you can understand why at this point, once you have a pH of 7, when you just start adding a little drop, a little drop of NaOH, suddenly, boom, the um, pH rises so quickly. Why? Because you have a neutral uh, solution. It's a neutral solution. So as soon as you add one drop of OH-, minus, already it's going to start affecting the pH um, in a significant way. And so as you're adding the OH-, minus, it's affecting the pH because there's no way to neutralize it. Before, over here, you have H+. Plus. You have lots of H+. Plus. So as you're adding OH-, minus, the, H plus, the OH- minus is attacking the H+, plus, but it's not significantly affecting the pH because there's a counterbalance that's occurring because of the presence of H+. Plus. But once you've neutralized all the H+, plus, boom! Then it's the OH minus that takes over, and then uh, this part of the curve is like that of a strong base, which is really what is left over. Now, I just want to make sure that you're clear on the conjugate acid base thing, so I'd like to ask you a question. So this is a substance here, HSO4 minus. And I would like you to uh, answer this question. Uh, which one of these substances, and I'll get out of your way so you can see it properly, which one of these substances would be a conjugate base for HSO4 minus? So we have here SO3 2 minus, and SO3, by the way, happens to be called the sulfite 
eye on, but uh, they don't usually ask nomenclature questions for general chemistry. Definitely for organic chemistry, you need to know your nomenclature, but uh, for general chemistry, as long as you pay attention to the most common things that keep coming up, sodium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid, um, sulfuric acid, etc., then you, you, won't ha you shouldn't have any problems. So that's uh, sulfite. This is sulfate, of course. You should recognize that because of... Uh, sulfuric acid, and so this is sulfate 2 minus, and this is H2SO4, which is uh, dihydrogen sulfate. Of course, most of the word, world recognizes it as sulfuric acid, and really that's the expression that you would use for it. And here is hydrogen sulfite. Okay, so you may want to just pause, cons consider your answer. Which of these four would you choose as uh, the conjugate base for H? SO4 minus. Okay, so the conjugate base for HSO4 minus. Uh, well, first of all, you have to recognize that whether you're talking about conjugate acid or conjugate base, it has to be related to this. So sulfite is right out because it's not uh, directly related to the two things happened, oxygen left and hydrogen. No, no. We're looking at um, acid-base pairs. We're looking at changes uh, with hydrogen. So um, for the conjugate base means we are looking for a base. So we're looking for something that's more basic than this. If it's more basic than this, that means this was the acid. This released a proton. So therefore, it became this. So this is the conjugate acid, this is the conjugate base, and they are a pair. H2SO4, on the other hand, would, so this is the answer, to be clear, and H2SO4, on the other hand, this would be the conjugate acid of this conjugate base. So that would be the conjugate acid, conjugate base pair. Now, when you're talking about the conjugate base of this, then SO4, 2 minus, the sulfite ion would be the conjugate base. Okay, uh, another thing I do want to mention is that all these things, uh, they are quite ionized. Well, very ionized. You've got sodium chloride here. You've got uh, negative charge here and H plus and all of that. So they're quite ionized. So we would say that these compounds would be electrolytes. So these are chemical compounds that in solution um, can carry charge and therefore uh, can have a, an effect on uh, electricity. In fact, later we're going to uh, look at an electrochemical cell um, and galvanic cell, so that uh, an electrolysis. So, and uh, you will see that there's something called a salt bridge, and in the salt bridge, the salt bridge can carry charge from uh, one part of the cell to another. And so, uh, chemicals can carry charge, and those are called electrolytes. And and in water is great because water can hydrogen bond, water is a polar molecule, so to be charged in this environment where uh, like dissolves like is great because uh, you're not getting, um, you know, if put NaCl in, in fat, <laughs> you know, in lipids, uh, then you, you don't have a strong electrolyte as you would when it's in uh, water, which is a polar molecule. Okay, so that's um, a strong acid and a uh, strong base. So let's look at what happens if you have a uh, weak acid instead. So I'm going to symbolize a weak acid uh, this way. I'm going to put HA, um, and this is going to go to uh, H plus and A minus, and A minus would be the acid. Of course, uh, you know, these arrows really go both ways because it's a weak acid. It's not like HCl, which really um, ionizes completely, you know, so a weak acid wouldn't necessarily uh, do so. So this is a weak acid, and so we're going to put a weak acid in that flask. We're going to set up the burette, put sodium hydroxide, and start le uh, letting in some sodium hydroxide. So when the titration begins, this weak acid uh, is not going to have a, a pH of uh, 1 or, or 0 or something really, really low. Uh, perhaps its pH might be um, three or four, something something higher. So the curve is going to start with a uh, higher number um, because it is a weak acid. But as you're adding the sodium hydroxide, of course, the uh, curve starts to increase, increase, and then it does something like that. Now, the equivalence point where the curve changes direction 
um, is not going to be at 7, but rather um, looking at it about up there, about up there, um, it's going to be around here. So the equivalence point here for the uh, weak acid is going to be uh, somewhere around there. There's also an interesting point um, uh, which is called the half equivalence point between the flat part of the curve and the equivalence point. So the half equivalence point which would be uh, around here. And this uh, point is where the pH is equal to the pKa. So the pH is equal to the pKa. Of course you remember that the Ka is the acid dissociation constant and uh, that means that the um, Ka here um, would be calculated as the product of the product over the product of the reactants. So we have this, and this is H plus, A minus, and this is HA. And we know that the pKa is the negative log Ka. And so at this point, half equivalence point, for a uh, weak acid, strong base titration, that's equal, uh, the pH is equal to uh, uh, pKa. Okay, and uh, so we're not surprised that the, the pH starts off um, relatively high uh, because it's a weak acid. And then at the equivalence point, at the equivalence points where all the H plus is going to be uh, equal to the OH minus, at that point you start giving more OH minus, boom. There's no H plus left to neutralize the OH minus, so now the OH minus is completely affecting the pH as, as like it did uh, when it was a strong base weak, um, uh, uh, strong base, strong acid titration. And so I drew this just above the other one only to make sure that you see, <laughs> see it. But no, it, it really is going to be following the, the form as long as the uh, molarity and the concentrations and all that uh, are the same. At this point, it's going to be following the same curve uh, that I drew in red.